sit back today. I'm going to give you a little taste of what's to come here at the Hidden Spring Farm. Morning, guys. It's a beautiful day on the farm once again. <laughs> it's minus two today, which is, I don't know, in Fahrenheit. But uh, I'll put it up on the screen here for all you Americans that know Fahrenheit and anybody else in the world. I don't know Fahrenheit. I don't even know how to convert the two. <laughs> We're going to have fun today preparing for a couple of upcoming projects. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But first things first, let's get into this barn and check on those two kitties, Chewy and Bubbles, and see how they're doing. I don't see any cats in here right away. They're probably inside. I'm going to take a look in a minute. They've eaten a little bit of food, but they haven't used the litter box at all. The trouble is with barn cats, if they have all this straw, they could just do their poops and their peas right here in the straw. So the litter box is not that big of a deal, but I want to make sure they're eating and drinking. I can see that they've eaten some food and I can see some straw in the water. So I know that they've drank some water. Let's take a look in here. Bubbles? Chewy, you okay? Whoa. Chewy, you okay? You okay, Bubs? It's okay. Chewy, you okay, Bubs? Chewy. I'm sorry, buddy, but you're going to have to stay in here. My heart breaks when they make that sound. <laughs> Bubbles doesn't make that sound. Only Chewy does. But man, my heart's sinking a little bit because I know that he's not comfortable. He's not happy. <laughs> it's got to be done, though. And I, I have to overcome that. And like I said, I've been through this before. So I know that it's a little bit sad to see them locked up they have this big room though it's not like they're all trapped in a little cage but uh, bubbles she stayed in there she's not as scared chewy is a problem but what i'm gonna do is leave them alone now i've checked their water i've checked their litter i've checked their food they're all good and they were both in the little hut which is good because they can stay warm in there now it's just i gotta give them probably a week of not really bothering them and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to sit and I'm going to start hand feeding them and hopefully they'll approach me once they start trusting me again. What are you guys doing? Bobby! 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 Their poop's starting to pile up again, but it's been so cold here, it's all frozen, and it's kind of frozen to the ground. <laughs> What's going on? Maybe they're so hungry, eh? Look at them. <laughs> oh, I've never heard them making that sound before. That's Billy. Weird. Maybe they're desperate for food. Hey, I'm coming guys. I'm coming. Billy, Bobby, 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 Billy, Billy, Bobby, 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 Bobby. Whoa! What are you guys doing? You spilt it all. Look at these stinkers. They spilt it. You guys are crazy. Bobby, you can't fit there, bud. Gotta put some more straw down so they can stay warm. You guys enjoying that meal? Hey, Bobby. Billy. Oh, you're getting hairy, Billy. You're getting hairy. It's like a wire brush. You too, Bobby. You're getting hairy too, bud. Hey. What are you guys doing with that scarf? Mama just put that on. Come here. Yeah, I see you. I'm talking to you. 
Yeah, I'm talking to you. What do you think you're doing? What are you doing? That's no, okay? Look what you did. You're supposed to look pretty for the YouTube videos. What are you guys doing? You've ruined it. No. So much for the scarf idea. <laughs> My darling's like, oh, you're gonna film today? Let me put this scarf on them so they look great for the videos. <laughs> Olive still has her scarf though. But geez, <laughs> I don't know how the heck they can just rip it off and play tug of war with the scarf. Stinkers. Say hi to the chickens and uh, I'm gonna head down, show you what it is I'm working on. How you doing, hens? Are you guys coming out? Come on out and play. Okay, I'm getting to you next. I'm coming, guys. I'm coming. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Here you go, guys. Put it in the snow so you can start digging around. Yeah, Elvis is still in the building. are always very good layers. Elvis is gonna get you. Out. Thank you. Oh, I forgot the dog's water yesterday. Oh, jeez. There you go. There you go. Hate when I do that. Forgot. I always like to have water for the dogs, you know? Cause they're always running around playing and they get thirsty they do eat some snow and stuff like that but i forgot yesterday i hope that bucket's not cracked yeah mj rules look at his beautiful tail look at that fella uh, <laughs> Michael Jackson! You okay, Red? Ah. Uh. <laughs> Your tail's looking good, buddy. Looking real good. Garden's not looking too shabby right now. I can't wait until the gardening season. Over here, we have a little pile of rabbit poo building up, so I'll have all that available when, you know, it's time to get the show on the road here in the spring. But for now, we're all hunkered down. The geese are hunkered down. The ducks, they don't even want to come out. <laughs> Everybody's just hunkered down because we're right in the dead of winter. And, you know, we just want to get the winter over with at this point. <laughs> See if the ducks have any eggs. Whoa, there's two. One, two. Yes. Hey, 
babies are coming in. They're coming in, don't freak out. <laughs> Molly's so cute, you know. She's such a smart dog. She's she accepts her own limitations. And the best way I describe to people when I'm talking about these two old English sheepdogs, they're very different in their own ways. But Olive is like the 100 meter dash sprinter in the Olympics. You know, she's very athletic, very fast, very quick, very excitable, almost an infinite amount of energy. <laughs> Molly, on the other hand, is kind of like that 350 pound shot put guy, you know? The guy that spins around and then throws that ball. <laughs> or like one of those big, huge power lifter guys. That's Molly. She's not really that fast, but she's very strong. Much more stronger than Olive. But all is still young anyways, but man, these dogs are so fun. They love the snow. They love the farm. Heading down to my drive shed here. That's where I got my tractor. And if you remember folks who saw a couple videos ago, we talked about the next step in the revolution of this farm. <laughs> revolution, right? Is a sawmill. And I'm quite certain I got my mind made up that, yes, I need to get a sawmill. I'm in no rush to make any more animal structures. I do have several more things that I want to build, but I'm in no rush and I can take my time, harvest some of the already dying trees, turn it into lumber and do it right. And this is the area right here. You can see I've already cleared it. Well, I'm gonna clear it with the snow right now because <laughs> I wanna stay on top of it so that I'm ready when I pull the trigger to get that mill, it's easy to assemble, I have an area. This is all relatively flat soil now. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job of giving myself a good starting point. This is a good amount of space. I mean, I didn't measure it, but it's big enough for a sawmill and maybe, maybe a sawmill roof, you know, like a roof structure, because I'm not gonna spend 10 grand on a sawmill and not protect it. <laughs> and I just love building things anyway. It just further develops the farm. It's a really good shoulder workout to use that pole chainsaw because you're holding a lot of weird weight, eh? I think there's a strap that you can get for it that goes over your shoulders, but I didn't get that because I don't think that far ahead. <laughs> But there's also something that I want to do moving forward. I don't know if I'll get it done this year, but definitely I'm going to be milling my own lumber for it. And that's putting on some kind of a lean-to extension onto my drive shed garage thing here. You can see it would be easy enough to do 
just from up there, have a little lean-to roof and extend it by maybe 10 feet or so. Kind of maximize the space in here. I think I've done a fairly good job of kind of organizing everything. As the farm grows and it gets further developed and we acquire more equipment or I need more storage space or maybe storage space to dry the lumber, who knows? I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So basically, if I'm going to eventually, this year or next year, build some kind of a lean-to addition onto this building, i got to get rid of these trees here. I have no idea what kind of trees they are. There's probably about six or seven, maybe eight, good-sized trees. Like this one right here is a good size. You could easily turn that into a bunch of two-by-fours or like, uh, like a six-by-six six or something like that. But there's a whole bunch of little tiny ones that wouldn't be good for nothing. Maybe firewood, maybe wood chipping. But this is all going to have to be cleared before I can build that sucker. Of course, the problem is, where do you drop the tree? When you fell, fall, fallen? When you cut a tree, it's got to fall in a direction that it's not going to interfere up top and get hung up because you don't want your big trees to get hung up it's the worst so of course the most logical spot is to cut the tree in such a way that it falls right there and that way it's not going to drop on my building because you don't want it to fall that way on the building there's no room on the other side to go that way because there's fencing and stuff there you're not going to wreck the fence so the only way it's got to go right here now if i've already purchased a mill Right? I'm going to be setting it up right here. Then what? I'm going to drop the trees? Almost like I knew what I was doing! Dogs are happy that they're free again. <laughs> you know, when I'm doing this kind of dangerous type work, just in case anybody is wondering and worried about Olive and Molly, I do lock them up, okay? I just put them in the barn and I close the door and they don't like it, but really, it's only for 10 minutes while I fall the tree, you know? But I'm getting pretty good with this chainsaw stuff, eh, guys? Yeah, learning a lot. I feel good about how much I've been learning. It's crazy. Now, this big, huge tree that I just dropped, the wood is very, very soft. I don't even have any idea what kind of wood it is. But I can definitely make some six by sixes out of the bottom end there. Definitely getting the log to your sawmill is the most difficult and time consuming and actually exhausting thing. Because <laughs> this is only one medium sized tree. And by the time you start limbing it, you know, taking off all the side branches and measuring it out and kind of, you know, getting it into the pieces that you want to put on the mill, it's a good amount of work. <laughs> I gotta eat my Wheaties for breakfast on those days. <laughs> but I mean, it's a good sized tree. That's my hand. I should be able to get a six by six out of that. Definitely a bunch of planks, but I don't even know what kind of wood it is. 
Has everybody tried this picture this app on your phone? I think you can take a picture of bark and it'll identify the tree for you. What? It says it's a Chinese parasol tree. It's also known as a phoenix tree, varnish tree, Chinese bottle tree. That can't be. I don't know if that's right, but it's coming up as a phoenix tree. Or it's also known as a varnish tree or a paras Chinese parasol tree. Parasol tree. I've never heard of this in Ontario. Or the app doesn't work. <laughs> that's always a possibility. I mean, if it's a parasol tree, I don't even know what that means, if that's the truth. I'll have to do a little bit of research on it. I don't even know if you should be using that for lumber or not. But, I don't know. I'm kind of a risk taker kind of guy. <laughs> all I need now is a stick picker upper, you know, because I'm tired of bending over to pick up all the branches. Tired. <laughs> it's always going to be a fun time at the farm. I can pretty well guarantee that because I'm having a blast and I hope you're having a blast too. And if anybody hasn't seen or heard the story of how Olive came to the farm, watch the video down below. It's very cool, very sweet about this lady from Ohio had to rehome Olive and we took her in and there's a whole story about it. So watch that video for us, okay?